Oh yeah, Black Sun in the hizzle, all the shizzle dizzle. We got an excellent show here today, but first I want to say the views and opinions that of the arena does not reflect that of Comcast, is staff, or affiliates. And the views of Black Sun does not reflect that of the arena. We are a council. And the views of Black Sun does not reflect that ah. nobody will watch Sun. <laughs> okay. To my right. White Sun is an alter ego. Yeah, White Sun, yeah. I'm going to have Don explain it. Okay. <laughs> to my right. Introduce yourself, Marlon. Hi, my name is Marlon. I'm an activist here in Atlanta, um, and I'm an anarchist. Mmm, right. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Dawn, and uh, I'm here on the council, and I'm a local troublemaker. Oh. <laughs> and and my name is Gidon, and a Marlon is also a big fish. That's true. That's right, and I is here on the Arena Uncensored. Right, it's your boy, man, Yango, man. I'm happy to be back. Welcome back. It's always, man. It's always, man. It's always, man. Did you miss me, baby? Did you miss me? Did it's on now, baby. So you know, do my thing. A little bit of everything, some of everything. Man. I'm just, I'm just happy to be excited to be on the show. I'm just ready to start some trouble. That's right. Yes. Got some new specs right. there, gang. Yes, yes, yes. Man, I had to get my Malcolms back. All right, right. They're nice. <laughs> They're very nice. Right. Thank you. Thank you. So. All right, all right. I, I, you know, we had uh, Marlon on the show with Kevin. Uh, about two weeks ago, and um, you know, I keep hearing this anarchy, anarchy thrown away. So I said, you know, I might have Marlon explain this thing to me because I don't. Uh, now, my concept of anarchy is like Iraq when they overthrew a Saddam, they left this big old void, and then you had groups like ISIS form, Al-Qaeda. You, you had, a, I guess, like a free-for-all. And so, I don't know. I'm going to have you explain it, Marlon, because, you, know, you know, the media, you know how they do. You know how they do as niggers, the black folks, they tell us how, who our enemies are, how to feel, what to buy. Well, look, that, okay, you're right. The reason that you understand anarchy to be something like Iraq is because that's the way it's been painted through history. Right. Anarchy is equated with chaos. Right? Yes. Um, and, the, and the reason that they... That, that authorities try to conflate those things is they want us to believe that without their authority, right. without their government right. controlling us and dominating us, there would be nothing but chaos. Right. Right? Mm. That's the only choice. It's either them or chaos. Mm. Which one do you want? Wow. And the reality is that anarchy is a state of affairs where there is no authority controlling us, but there's not chaos because we are self-organized. Mm. Right. Because we're able to organize ourselves to, to have, you know, orderly, respectful um, society in the absence of authority. So is it based, it's based on the good nature of the human being? Well, it's based on the natural tendency of human beings to um, see to their own welfare and not to the destruction of, of, um, of each other, right? Which is not the same as to say, we assume that everybody is, is a nice, saintly person, right? Mm -hmm. Like, they're oh, bad people, they're right? Not. <laughs> and people will seek to take advantage of each other. But in general, in the absence of authority compelling people to oppose each other, they will tend to see to their own well-being first mm -hmm. before they seek to destroy others, right? Mm -hmm. um, so in the absence of authority, we have people mostly minding their own business, right? Like, mm -hmm. not seeking to get into large-scale conflict. That's not to say that people don't get in conflicts. Mm -hmm. Conflict is a part of life. Everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. The only people who will tell you that we can avoid conflict are the authorities. Mm. The people who, who <laughs> want to, 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 to tell us that we can have a society free of any kind of conflict if we just put them in charge and if we just let them call the shots. Mm -hmm. But every time we do that, every time we give an authority that power to say, okay, remove conflict from our society, they always end up forcing that conflict on the lowest tier of society. Yeah, right? exactly. They protect some and they oppress others. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you a question? Um, how would you define authority, just so that we know in detail? Because I assume when you mean authority, you mean the state. But if there are people who are self-governing and stuff like that, wouldn't that be a new form of authority? Yeah, that's a, cool, mm -hmm. that's a good question. All right, yeah, so yeah. Uh, one thing I'll say is that, like, I am not an authority on anarchism, right? Like, this is, these are ancient ideas. Lots of people have them in lots of different ways. So, like, when I talk about it, I don't want to, like, be claiming that I'm, like, the one who's Like the leading expert, right. He, right. He's not Marlon um, the anarchist. Right. But there's this, there's this great publication um, that this group called Crime Think put out. Um, it's called To Change Everything. Um, and you can get it for free if you search for it on the internet, To Change Everything. Um, 
And I'll read this little section here that talks about power versus authority. It says, start by seeking power, not authority. Mm. It says, the workers who perform the labor have power. The bosses who tell them what to do have authority. Mm. The tenants who maintain a building have power. The landlord whose name is on the deed has authority. Mm -hmm. A river has power. A permit to build a dam grants authority. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing oppressive about power per se. Many kinds of power can be liberating. The power to care about those you love, to defend yourself, resolve disputes, to perform acupuncture, to, steal, to steer a sailboat, to swing on a trapeze. There are ways to develop your capabilities that increase others' freedom as well. Every person who acts to achieve her full potential offers a gift to us all. But authority over others usurps their power. Mm. And whatever you take from them, others will take from you. So it sounds like a breakdown, like <coughs> an archy, because like archy always imposes a higher archy, like mm -hmm. somebody over you. Okay, so I, well, I do. Okay. I mean, you know, my, my story, going back to like you were saying that this is, um, when you said again, doing away with the authority, which I can agree to a certain extent. And then the, what he said, um, the people do, having responsibility for themselves. Mm -hmm. Here's my concern as an African here in America. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? History has shown that without uh, intervention, and unfortunately it's been by the same racist system, the same capitalist system that is oppressing us, but sometimes federal intervention has been needed to stop places that the authority, like we look at Alabama, right. where they were going against the federal authorities and they was on some state stuff, man, and where you find murder, tyranny, uh, brutalization, <coughs> just all kind of heinous and, 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 man, some of the most despicable crimes committed against the people because of the lack of federal intervention and the lack of federal um, authority down there. So when we separate into these things, what's to stop? Especially our, our European counterparts, our white counterparts, from having white entitlement, white privilege, and feeling like these resources are theirs, this is theirs, and inflicting the same thing that has happened to us from time immemorable. Yeah, you're right. That would be that would be not anarchy, right? If that okay. was to happen, and the reason is because, like you were saying, we oppose hierarchy, right? right. And, and and white supremacy is a form of hierarchy, right? right? Mm -hmm. It's right. saying that this type of people is above other people, those people only exist to serve their needs, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that's the kind of thing about anarchy that I feel is different from a lot of other like political programs or ideologies, is we believe that all of these systems of oppression need to be destroyed. It's not a question of we can attack this one and solve it independently. All of these things will work together to oppress us as who long as any it? of them exist. Who, if there's no state, and no, who enforces that? Are we just relying on you know, and I know this cover your ears because you're an atheist. So we just relying on God to come and oh, oh, oh. that's a good point. No, you know, we just relying on God to come and touch man's heart and say, hey, you know, be a humanitarian, be a egalitarian, don't do this. Or is there some type of agency or institution that enforces and ensures that the people, the less fortunate people, actually have a right to exist? Well, I mean, I, I think maybe a useful way of looking at the situation is not who will protect these people? Because we're used to people needing protection mm -hmm. from the government, right? But why do these people need protection in the first place? How do we ever get to a situation where there is the less fortunate that mm -hmm. needs to be protected by the powerful government? Um, and we I think no when authority. we look at that, we can no. see that it's always hierarchy. It's always power yeah. that puts people in that situation. And by empowering those people, we can prevent anybody from ending up in that situation. You know, there's a, um, I know we talked about, uh, well, I want to give you a scenario. Like, let's look at uh, Hurricane Katrina. Mm. Like, in a situation, well, I don't want to use a, I guess what I'm trying to say, Marlon, is in a situation without government, how would we, I guess, distribute the resources? Because the first thing is food, clothes, well, food, clothes, shelter, but I'm definitely saying food and water. Definitely. I'm thinking, how do we... I guess fairly distributed amongst the different factions of people. Katrina is a really good example, actually. Oh, okay. Um, mm -hmm. So when Katrina hit New Orleans, um, all the infrastructure was destroyed. Mm -hmm. The government basically left New Orleans. Yeah, sure did. Yeah. The police pieced out, except yeah. for the ones that were going to stay and perform racist murders, mm -hmm. vigilante style. That's right. Mm -hmm. and emergency services were gone. All of the government functions that we usually expect to take care of us, they left. Mm -hmm. right? That's right. Yep. 
But I'll tell you, some of the folks that didn't leave um, and who came as soon as possible were anarchists. Um, True, and yep. so while we had, while there was FEMA on the ground not doing anything, That's you know, right. thumbs up their butts, while we had the Red Cross still trying to figure out yeah. how they could get more money out of the situation, while all that stuff was happening, there were anarchists on the ground in the Common Ground Collective, yeah. which was started um, you know, by some of my comrades as well as ex-Black Panthers. Right. Um, they were providing the actual needs to people on the ground, um, literally saving people's lives, getting people food, shelter, everything they That's needed. Right. And the reason that they were able to do it when all of these authoritarian forces weren't is because they didn't stop to worry about what's it going to cost me? Mm -hmm. Am I going to lose any power? How can I make the most of this situation for myself? Right. They were concerned with helping each other, right? And when we act only in that interest, like directly in, in the interest of helping each other, then, then we can, right? But when we're, when we're forced to worry about profit and property right. and power and authority and all of these things, it gets in the way. It prevents us from actually being able to effectively help people. You trying to say capitalism bad on the slide here? <laughs> on the slide, ain't nobody on the slide. Yeah, Marlon, I got a quick question for you. Um, <laughs> it's real. So I noticed that you know definitely during the Occupy movement, a lot of people started talking about anarchism a lot more yeah. than they did before, and particularly socialists would talk about uh, anarchism. Could you sort of like outline the differences or similar or talk about some of the similarities between socialism and anarchy? Yeah. Well. So as I understand it, socialism is primarily an, an economic program. Right? Mm -hmm. Socialism says mm -hmm. we need to get rid of capitalism because capitalism causes these different kinds of oppressions. Mm -hmm. right? Capitalism makes sure that poor people don't have access to health care, that they become homeless, that they you know, end up in jail, uh, that they don't have jobs. Um, and those are all true things that I agree with and I think that all anarchists would agree with. Yeah. Capitalism is a form of hierarchy that basically enslaves people. It's exploitation. Um, and, and we have to get rid of it if any of us want to be free, especially mm -hmm. the people on the bottom. Um, one of the differences that sometimes comes up is some, some socialists think that the way that we need to get rid of capitalism is through creating a new authority, a new centralized oh. leadership I that see what will... You're that will abolish capitalism and say, here's the new way we're all doing it. Uh, these are the new rules. Everybody get to work under these new rules. Um, RCP. I was just thinking about that. I mean, I mean but I think that we have to, you know, as an African communalist, you know, I don't like to always use the word socialist, but, you know, as a socialist, I think that we have to make that distinction, that socialism does, there are some people who take socialism and evolve it to communism. You know, I'm not a communist. Right. You know, I stop at the socialist aspects of it. So it's like when you're saying with the Revolutionary Communist Party, you have that, that understanding. And I agree with everything with what Marlon saying. My primary concern as an African here in America um, is that I think that it's, it's – I don't hear anything that's – see, when I look at us historically, when I take our historical material – I don't know how to say – how I say the word? Uh, Historical material? Yeah, dialect, dialect. dialectic. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, you know, see, when I take us and, and look at how things have affected us specifically, that when we have relied on the nature of man, especially other people outside of African people, that they have not always had our best interests at heart. And even the ones that have had, like the Quakers, big shout out to Sue Ann. Sue Ann. Yo. Know, like the Quakers and other people that have uh, helped in the uh, um, abolitionist move, uh, abolitionist movement uh, here in a, here in the, uh, on the shores of North America, they were still persecuted. So if you don't have an institution to offer some type of deterrent from because there's always going to be people out there who want authority. You know what I'm saying? There's right. always going to be people out there who want to capitalize on like other the people's Hebrews lights wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Um, capitalize on other people's misfortune. So my thing is, what about I? You know, I, I just I'm I'm a little uh, hesitant, a lot of hesitant to rely just on the nature, the good nature of people to believe that you know this human being has a good nature. He's going to do what's right because it's which what's right. You know, brothers like Marlon and people like Marlon. This that I'm gonna say just from my experience, I, and it may be more. Don may know better than me because she intermingles with a lot more people than I do are far and few between, you know what I'm saying? So I just can't rely on the, the good nature of white folk. Well, 
I think, and, and I'm, I'm, uh, I want to kind of add to that too. So, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, nigga. You're so wrong. You're saying, okay. <laughs> 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 well, I, I think what Yang is trying to say is that there needs to be a check and balance. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Well, Perfect. sure, but um, but what are what is the check and balance, right? I mean, I think you're right that that we can't trust people's good nature. Mm -hmm. um, but when you think about it, creating positions of authority is the perfect example of trusting people's good, yeah. good character. Good nature, right? good we're saying, this guy is a good guy, mm -hmm. so we're going to put him in charge of a lot of other people, mm -hmm. and we're going to hope that since he's a good guy, that he'll do the right do thing. Right. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't believe in, in, in really putting people in authority. I believe that the state or any apparatus you have that are governing people should be by the people. I believe that the people should elect their representatives from their communes or whatever little area they're in to represent them on a a larger collective when it comes to distributing the uh, economics, the resources, whatever. I believe the resources belong to the people. I don't believe that any one person should be able to have control of the trees, the water, all of this. And I believe that there should be rules and actions in place and there should be a people's militia that if a people, just like it really says even in their so-called constitution, that the people have the right to arms and where the government will not or cannot uh, uh, protect or enforce and guarantee the rights of the people, then the people have a right to overturn that government. Then I think that the people should have a people's militia and that the, when the, these representatives that we have elected don't get out of there through elections or they're going to find some way to do it, that the people's militia, not a standing government, governing military, not a military paid by the government, but the people's militia, okay. you know, go in there and remove these representatives. So you're talking about reform. Oh, no, no, no. no wait a minute. No, no, I'm not talking, talking, talking about reform. About, you're talking about the people's I've militia. That ain't reform. No. <laughs> now, now, one thing that I'll say is, while I know you're talking about this in a revolutionary sense mm -hmm. of this new thing that we should create, everything that you're saying reminds me of the American Constitution, of our founding fathers. Mm -hmm. That's what they felt, too. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, admittedly, they felt it for white people, right, right, and that's right, different, right? right? But they thought that we should only have a militia also. They thought mm -hmm. we shouldn't have a standing army. They thought that we should elect our leaders through democracy mm -hmm. so that every person, every property-owning white man mm -hmm. can have a say in government, and look where we are today. Right. It mm -hmm. didn't work, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason it didn't work is because even though they wanted the government to be controlled by the people, by setting it up in a centralized way, right. they created this one central power that could be captured and could be fought over. And we see now has been captured by people who don't have our interests. I'm going to tell you why I feel like it didn't work, though. It, it Not so much just the system, not so much democracy, but capitalism. That's why I feel like it didn't work. Capitalism, I think a lot of times capitalism is used synonymous with democracy. I don't have a problem with the people electing their officials, but when the when you do uh, capitalism, then you these so-called founding fathers had private investors and private banks, so people started doing things for interest. You know, I slide you a couple hundred thousand, you do this way or that way. When you do away with private property, when you do away with all that and the resources belong to the people, then there is no, then it takes the, um, it takes the uh, initiative or the incentive to cheat the people it takes out because you're robbing from yourself. If I do this, if I control, if I work and I'm getting the product, the, the fruit of my labor, then Gideon's not getting all the money and give me a little bit and this and that. If I rob from that company, I rob from myself, and I find Gideon robbing from me, I'm going to get that ass. And if he forgets <laughs> to me, robbing from him, he's going to get my ass. You understand what I'm saying? So I think that capitalism, the, the whole thing of capitalism really – uh, killed their constitution, capitalism and white supremacy, which oh, capitalism yeah. was based off of sure. white supremacy ideology anyway. But um, And I think those are one of the things. But I think democracy was a big step from that monarchy type bull stuff that they was living from. And I think that uh, democracy, when done, when practiced properly, a true democracy, a transparent democracy, really has the potential to be effective and work. I think it's the economic system of capitalism that really destroys this country. Well, I mean, if you look at, at, at hierarchy overall, right, you've got these different forms of hierarchy, and capitalism is one of them. Mm -hmm. It says whoever controls the capital gets to make the calls over how society should be organized, right? Mm -hmm. And when you look at democracy, it's, it's strikingly similar. It's whoever has the most votes gets to make the call over how society should be organized. And in both of those cases, we find that, well, whoever has a little bit more money, they start getting more money. Right? The money right. accumulates. Richie, mm -hmm. Richie. Like they centralize it, right? Mm -hmm. And similarly with our democratic system, we can see that the people who get some political power, they use that political power to accumulate more political power. You mean like the Bush and the Clintons? 
like every like all yeah. politicians, mm-hmm. right? Pretty much. That's their job. They, they exist to accumulate power. Why do they need power? So they can get more power, and and it just keeps going like this, right? Do and you as mean the power, power or authority, but uh, authority, authority. And power through through authority. Through authority. Okay. Their authority but is allows they... them to exercise power. But I'm sorry. And it's you... a danger. That's a dangerous situation to end up in because even the most well-intentioned system, like, like even if you design the system with good intentions, right? Mm-hmm. Like we want it to be democratic. We want people to be in control of it. If they're not directly in control of it, how do you make sure that some party, some malicious party, doesn't come in and start taking control? Well, and that's why we got to look at decentralization. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I yeah. Think, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. 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 And I can I can understand that about not having a centralized so much of a centralized leadership so much of a figurehead but I mean more like like we operate as a council I think that you should have representatives to represent those groups because how do you get around democracy even even without um, like you were saying if, if groups in, in anarchy if groups are going what's in the best interest they're going to go what's in the best interest of their group sure. it's going to be so sure. if that group outpowers or over outnumbers another group within their region the resources and the benefits are still going to go to that group that has the more the most members the most manpower the most know-how or whatever so who ensures that that minority group has a fair share to the resources where is if everybody even in that minority group has an elected representative to the council then everybody has a voice you, you see, and I think that that's, that's my thing with democracy. I think that every group, regardless of how many, if you got five and I got 20, you still are allowed a representative. Yeah, but if you only got five, then in a democracy, the majority just rolls right over you. Because well, that's what a democracy, yeah. let's be real. A yeah. democracy yeah. is a dictatorship of the majority. Mm-hmm. If you are the majority in a democratic society, like, for example, white people in America, mm-hmm. you just roll over the minority. Who cares what they think? Because mm-hmm. they do not have enough votes to threaten you. And, and that's, that's an unethical way to run a society. Can I ask something then? Um, how would democracy look then? You know, because say, say for instance, it's true you've got the majority of white people in the United States and through their majority, they're able to overcome, you know, people of color, black people, et cetera, et cetera. How would, dem- what would democracy look like in an anarchist system? Or, democracy. well, I mean, so, so democracy is a form of government, right? And, oh, and anarchy right. Is, is, is against government. But then, right? but then how do people make decisions together? How do people well, decide to live how together? Do you, <laughs> do how do you make decisions um, yeah. within your family? Or how do you make decisions within your church group? Or among Wait, your Mark, friends, hold on, hold on, hold right? Uh, you, it's possible to make decisions without either a formal structure or anybody being in charge. We do it all the time. Isn't that a democracy, though? It. Not really. When you we decide should, to go we should out clarify to the democracy, with your friends, right. do you go, everybody cast a vote? I mean, basically, you like, and if basically, it's evenly if it's split, all of us, then you, as the chairperson of our friends, will. Yeah, you know, I mean, basically, so that's yeah. that, the most influential. If all of us decide to go to the movies and we're all divided, there's five of us here, uh-huh. yeah. and we're like, okay. First, it's like, what are we gonna go see? Yeah, we're gonna go with the we're gonna go with the majority. Maybe not. And if we don't, right? if we what don't, if, what if what if everybody here wants to go see a movie except for Dawn, who thinks that that movie is racist and offensive, and she's gonna hate us if we go see that movie? Or I I'm got take I got the account. fifty bucks yeah. that'll take all of us to the theater. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all right, all right. All right. like you said, we're gonna t- we're gonna take that account, and that's that's her to have her and voice. I got the car. But at the same <laughs> time, then she's left with the option of not going to the movies with us. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we just have to be real. And, Do we and all? That's an important thing, right? Yeah. We cannot make her go to the movies exactly. if she doesn't want to because exactly. she has self-determination. Mm-hmm. And under right. a democracy, you do not have self-determination. You are ruled by the majority. Oh. Uh, I, okay, I, I okay. We, need, we need to, we need to, yeah. we need to dig into this one. We need to dig into this one. I think that you, I think that you can. I, I think that you can. Under a democracy, I think that you can have Break self-determination. Down, um, because I think that a democracy, like I said, is, and, and, and when you're talking about a capitalist democracy, that's something entirely different. Because the influence to me, the influence is those who control and have control of the resources, have control of the economics. But when you talk about a democracy where more on a council tip, where everyone has a representative and everyone according, everyone is provided their needs uh, according to their, the provided means according to their needs. You know, I think that the, the rules and the regulations have to be set up. But I can't think that to sit around and not have a form of where I don't have a say or I'm relying on because somebody's always going to be the minority. Well, Somebody, so what if my representative isn't representing me? Do you get rid of that representative? How? I'm just one person. If he's not representing you? I mean, I think that every, everybody should. I don't believe in a two-party system. 
Like we here, like this is one of the only countries that have a two party right. party it system. Is, seriously. You know what I'm saying? So that's why it looks. That's why the so called democracy looks warped because it's not a democracy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They, they put democracy on this, what they claim to be a democracy, but it's not a democracy. I think that every people should have a representative at the table. If I'm in a country with an uh, Islamic country, I think the Jews and the Christians and everybody should have a representative sitting what at their table. The atheists? And the atheists. Okay, okay, I'm just... Even though there's some ungodly oh, creatures. <laughs> <laughs> praise be to Allah. Oh, be to Allah. <laughs> so, so, but I think that everyone should be um, have a representative to sit at the table, and I think that it goes back to what you were saying, that everyone should a, already has the rights to um, food, clothes, and shelter. I think that there should, should be already certain things that are not even open for discussion. Right, the right to, right, you know, the right. right to life, the right to, even with their constitution, that's why I say, that, so you got to understand that their constitution is actually a revolutionary doctrine. It, yeah, but because but they were waiting for revolution but that doesn't and stuff. Mean Okay, it doesn't ahead, mean that they're here to it. Yeah, it well, well, the thing was is that it, yeah, it wasn't written for it wasn't written for us at all. Mm -hmm. And you know, right. if you look at the Constitution, it looks like a term paper with post-it notes. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got the thirteenth and fourteenth and fifteenth amendments on there. You've got you know prohibition and then the repeal of prohibition. So, like right. you know, it's other countries like France have revised their Constitution mm -hmm. several right. times. So we're the ones who hold the Constitution to be a sacred document. Yeah, they, they're the ones. It's, it's no more, a little more than toilet paper to a lot of us. But uh, I'm just saying some of the some of the right, like life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, just some of the things you can throw back at them I mean, I that I believe in, 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 in our government, in our nation, that they're inalienable rights, that the human being has inalienable rights, and that that's already on the board. So having your representative to every people should be able to have a representative to represent them, to represent their needs, and to uh, have a say in the distribution of the resources. Mm -hmm. By the way, my name is Yang Nkrumah. A vote for me is a vote for... See, <laughs> but actually, that sounds a lot like what people would assume that we have now in the United States. And so I don't see a difference of what, you know, like... I guess the idea of making decisions together and that somebody w you would empower somebody to represent you makes, it makes some sense, but then you know, it's not a formal structure. I think that um, one of the, some of the things that makes me skeptical about anarchism is, is like, so how do those decisions get made? Because we, we had the example of the movies and stuff like that. But you know, are we going to be able to get out of empowering somebody to, you know, represent us? How how do we choose that person? Do we use an election to choose that person? Um, is this going to be a formal structure? Are we trying to avoid formal structures? And accountability is also key too, because I know that sometimes I've seen so-called hierarchical structures. But then certain people have more influence and That's more right. swing than, than other folks. So, you know, I know it's an, a, a, a process thing. You know, you have to be able to feel comfortable to say, hey, you know, I don't think this is uh, as horizontal as it should be. But what would that look like in an anarchist system? Like, well, listen, I think maybe one, one of the biggest blocks to, to being able to understand this is we've been trained to think in terms of states. Hmm. Uh, and I mean nation states, mm -hmm. right? Our entire world is organized according to nation states, or so we're told. Mm -hmm. This right. is the governing power of all society. We are Americans because we're here in America, right. and therefore we're governed by the American government. Mm -hmm. And if we want a change in our society, well, then we're going to have to change America, right, into something else. Um, and, and anarchism holds that nation states, borders, all these things, they should not exist. They are arbitrary. They're forced they ideas, right? They the are. idea that we are all Americans because we're within this border and we're controlled by a certain military, mm -hmm. it's just made up, right? In reality, we should look at the people who we actually have affinity with, and those are the people that we should be making decisions with. And those could be my neighbors, the people that I share common interests with, the people who are in my region and I might need to group together with for common d defense or securing of resources. Mm -hmm. Look at the people that we actually have something in common with, not the people that the authorities tell us that we have something in common Sounds with. Sounds like a nationalist to me. Well, yeah. it, it can look like nationalism, but I think, the, I think the reality is 
we have different kinds of connections to different people, yeah. right? Yeah. I mostly don't care what happens to somebody in California. Yeah. Um, I mostly don't care what happens to somebody in South Georgia, right? But there might be cases where I would, yeah. and then I would need to work with those people. But I only need to work with those people on the issues that affect all of us. Okay. And I think when we look at our lives most of the time, most of the time, really the people we need to be making decisions with on a daily level are the people that we come in contact with mm -hmm. regularly, the people mm -hmm. on our block, the mm -hmm. people at our workplace. Mm -hmm. This should be the basis of any decision-making process, mm -hmm. is like, how can I make decisions with the people that I work with, or the people that I live around, or you know, the people that watch my kids? Um, if, if we can do that, then we can figure out other systems for how we talk to the people who you know live in the next town over yeah. to find right. out if they need water or whatever. Right. And I'm not saying there's one way to negotiate all of those things. There's probably a lot of different ways, and we need to allow for a lot of different ways because one system isn't going to handle all of these kinds of negotiations. So you're saying, I'm, what I'm hearing is that, okay, you deal on a local level, then national, then I guess, because I'm, I'm thinking at some point well, in time. Well, there, there is no nations, right? Okay, no nations, but, but even what you're saying, um, let's just say Fulton and DeKalb, well, let's just say, that's not, just, just hypothetically, we got two counties here, but eventually you would have to, I don't know, I think the trade, because the resources in that local uh, region would come down to a certain point where you would have to, I guess, re make a request from California. You know, they sure. have grapes, they have And there's pecans. reasons that we should care about each other yeah. in California or in Afghanistan, right? right? Like, we all do, and it's not just a question of, oh, we should help the people in Afghanistan because it's the right thing to do, but our fates are intertwined. Right, right. We exactly. recognize right. Exactly. that we need them and they need us, yeah, right. and so we have a reason for mutual aid, is mm -hmm. what that's called. And it's not charity. It's different from helping people because we have pure hearts. We help people because we recognize that their fate and our fate are interlinked. Solidarity. And part of that is just like, look, if you let other people starve and you don't help them, then they're going to get hungry and angry. And take right. And who knows what they're going to do. Right. They're going right? to take your cookies. And that's, and that's bad for everybody, right? Mm. Even if they don't attack us first, they're going to start attacking people. Everybody's going to get violent. That's going to be a bad situation for us. So if we want to maintain stability, if we want to maintain peace, then we need to see to see, each other's needs. But that's good thinking, because what most people would think is that's when your military come, gets involved. <laughs> Those people would say, hey, you know what? They're going to start starving. We better feed them before they get starving. But that's where the greed of man comes in. He says, you know what? We better get clubs and rifles and guns and stop them from not let's right. feed them, let's not let's deplete our food sources, but let's reserve our food, protect our food sources. And then in protecting our food sources, it comes to say, you know what, we got guns, let's go take their little bit of food they have. Let's go jack and cook. Jack and cook. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My concern is, like you said, that, that we start to build with people we have in common with. The African here in America being a minority, what if these good white folks and these good Asian folks and all the rest of these people come over and decide they don't want to build with us? You know what I'm saying? And then that, that leaves us out of really uh, uh, access to the basic, the basic needs of survival. Yeah. I think that at, at some point in time, and like you said, I, I love what you said, Marlon. I think, man, that you're very articulate. I think that you, this is thought out. I thought I was going to come and have a lot of fun with you and just be throwing stuff, but your beep is thought out, <laughs> you know. I have a lot um, of respect for Marlon. Yeah, a lot of respect. Big, big kudos, brother. Mm -hmm. um, but, but my concern is it doesn't have to be a government that resembles this imperialist capitalist government that we live in right now, but I do believe that it, it has to be some type of institution that ensures that the underprivileged and the disadvantaged have the right to life, that they have the right to the resources, that I don't believe that um, one people should get rich, that the government should get rich, that this person, this representative of the government, isn't even paid right. by said government, but that he is a worker, amongst the mass of worker, he just happens or she just happens to be one, the articulate one, the one that can come and express rights. But there is no certain fund that you get because we elected you to office, now you get this certain fund. No, it's none of that. You're still a worker. You're still amongst the masses of the people, but you represent this region, this community, this area, amongst the council of that region, which re represents amongst the national council, uh, so on and so forth. But we, we're looking at infrastructure. We're looking at we need um, some type of apparatus or institution to ensure that our roads, our hospitals, our water is clean, that the That's farms continue to work, that these things, you know, continue to go on. And I'm rambling, man, and I'm, I'm sitting here seeing our elder hadn't said anything. He's quiet over in the cut. 
He's trying to think of a way to intermingle his goddamn theocracy with anarchy. <laughs> no, actually, you already have. I mean, uh, uh, here's uh, the future speaking. And first of all, let me just say, I am an anarchist. You are a theocrat. <laughs> I've been waiting for that. I am <laughs> an anarchist, and uh, chaos is not a, the antithesis of uh, the get smart underground secret service fighting against chaos, which is an old sitcom yeah, that came yeah, on. Yeah. One question, yeah, Gideon. My generation. Hold that thought, one question. Is Yah har uh, Yah's hierarchy. Okay. What you've been talking about in uh, anarchy is, in effect, the institution that you were referring to that would do equally distribute the food is a moralistic concept that comes originally out of a theocracy. Hmm. Because at the end of the day, as Marlon has so aptly Marlon, identified, at any time. <laughs> is that mutual need is going to be the motivating factor for distribution of resources and the ability of people to work Gideon. together despite their uh, labels and ideology Gideon. and philosophy. The only people entitled to that resource is if you guys were in charge of the people who believe in Yah. No. Uh, you serve quite, Yah. See, on, what man. we find in the book of Acts. And as the, uh, the Ruach HaKodesh, which is a Hebrew term for the Holy Spirit, was distributed among the Hebrews, yeah. which came in from day all nations yeah, on the day of Ruach I mean, yes, the day of Pentecost, Savuot's Hebrew term, is that after that spirit came upon them, everybody brought their resources to a centralized area, and then it was distributed according to need. And that's basically, see, the concept for me of anarchy is, I am an anarchist, I think that's a reiteration. That right there sounded like said. socialism. It is, in a sense, social. Mm -hmm. The ism <laughs> comes from the philosophy that identifies it as a particular governmental structure. Mm -hmm. The idea of anarchy uh -oh. for me is to fight against a system that oppresses the masses of the people and creates for them. Uh, uh, avenues for distributing resources based on who's in the political power structure. But Gideon, yeah. and, and look, um, when we talk about rights, right, like people, you're talking about, you know, access to food, access to shelter, these are rights. I agree, obviously, everybody should have these things, but when we talk about rights the way they're defined now, what are we really saying? Mm -hmm. Really what we're saying is there's a rule that says the government has to give this to people. Right? Mm -hmm. The government has the power to give everybody food, and it should. And I mean, I agree the government should give people food, but if we give the government the power to feed everybody, yeah, we're implicitly giving hope. them the power not to yeah. feed everybody. Yeah. Right? Wow. And so we got to think about where do rights actually come from? If we, if we assume that rights come from the state, from authority, who's going to feed us all and clothe us all, then we're giving them the power to take that away. And I think really what we need to see rights uh, as is is, is relationships, right? Yeah, exactly. We all have the right to eat, and that means we all have the obligation to feed each other when we're hungry, mm -hmm. right? right? Rights, rights are a responsibility that all of us have, and, right. and that's why it becomes a right. And, and that's not the way that government portrays it. Government portrays it as everybody you know, needs health care, so give us the power, and we'll make sure that everybody gets well, that. Well, but, let me just say don't this in me. reference to government. Again, I think we cloud this term and we shroud it in mysticism when it's just a term that identifies the ruling power or the social elite who create organizations whereby they can distribute wealth according to their own philosophy. In a capitalist society. In a capitalist society, and well, in the guilt eat. E Galitarian. <laughs> Easy for you to say. <laughs> right, right. Anyway, this issue of how we distribute it once again becomes the central point as to why we have common needs and how we will distribute those resources for everybody's benefit. Because we have a capitalist system which is not driven by hum human concepts of equality, mm. it's about I got the power, whoever has the gold makes the rule. Human right concepts on. of greed Ex and selfishness. Exactly. Right, because during this... The and how is it in uh, force? Just like we just had the national uh, memorial of the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Mm -hmm. That's how a capitalist system enforces its edicts on the populace. Yeah. So the concept of government, again, we need to break it down so our children don't think it's just this entity when it's really us 
but it's not all of us. It's the social elite and, and, who controls the, and I think the that, authority and yes, creates the artificial yes, concept yes. of authority when, in fact, we the people have the power. Well, I mean, well spoken. <laughs> and, and I think, man, really, I think that that's, <laughs> I think that that's could be, because that's, to me, that's the key. When you're living in the capital where the 1% run everything, exactly. that's the whole thing. But a, a government for the people, by the people, maintained by the people, overseen by the people, ran by the people, I think, idealistically anyway, mm -hmm. in my utopia, mm -hmm. is a is completely different. It is. You know what I'm saying? It is just that an apparatus, mm -hmm. an institution to ensure that man's nature, his baser side, mm -hmm. doesn't suppress or oppress or repress any people based on gender, mm -hmm. sexuality, ethnicity, or any of that. And and I'm concerned about, I, I'm, I'm not one of those people that just can rely on the good goodwill of men. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned about our elderly. I'm concerned mm -hmm. about if we're in a society that we stick together, um, you know, and we band with people that we have things in common, do we do like the Eskimos and put our elderly on the iceberg mm -hmm. and just so, you know what I'm saying? What happens when they can't feed themselves? Mm -hmm. What happens when you have the crippled or you have the mentally deficient? I think that institutions have to be set in place to guarantee, even if some, for some reason, uh, God forbid, that this society, that the majority of the people in that society become perverse or mm -hmm. that society becomes perverse, mm -hmm. that there are rule, that there's rules in place that make sure that the people mm -hmm. stay empowered and that the people's rights mm -hmm. to life mm -hmm. and, and, and like you said, Kujakali, self-determination uh, self mm -hmm. are always in, you know, we hope that they don't have to be enforced, but are always on the ready to be enforced and to be upheld. Let me throw this in as well, because when we talk about anarchy, again, when we talk about needing to eat, yes, uh, needing to have clean air, clean water, what we've seen is a synthesizing of products in you order to define, yes, to, to manufacture from an inorganic material products and services to infuse and, and create more product that the 1% controls. Mm -hmm. See, if we, uh, from a, an anarchist concept, when we look at these agencies that create scientifically food that's artificial and that is poisonous to us, we need to revolt in yes. order to go back to the natural yes. order of things yes. because ultimately that will help to ensure the life and yes. a liberty of all of us and the stability of the planet yes. itself. Yes. But see, because we have not been anarchists, we allow these government, this term government, mm. but really the wealthy who want to control the resources and would, which will use their ability to create techniques to where they go inside the earth and take out these material that, because they only have the wealth to uh, def uh, create the equipment to get it, where we could use sun, sun solar energy, water power, we'll get clean energy for the world community, it takes anarchists to be able to come and, against that. And I understand that, and I, I got a question socialists. for Marlon. Oh, yeah, so, so, okay, let me Same, make, similar hey, concept. So let's just say in the anarchist world, we got two different factions of people, right? And Why what, are they factions? I don't know. I mean, and that's an excellent concept because right, right. he, he's been programmed and and he, he's been he's doing saying what he's been taught. Okay, okay, you know what? Let me start over. <laughs> you have two people that get into a conflict, so it's just because you know I'm from LA. Let's do the Wild West. You know, <laughs> conflict happens. Y'all seen Django, right? The guy yes. that kills the other guy. <laughs> so who comes in? No, no, I mean, no, this is serious, though. Okay, this is okay, serious. I'm just using okay. Django as it, this most recent. But in, in most of your Wild West movies, there's a shootout between two people. Mm -hmm. They don't know who's the bad guy, who's the good guy. They're both wearing black with big Burt hats and all that. They have a shootout. Yeah. So the people come and like, okay, how do we resolve this? Like, how do we prevent this to keep going on, being, I guess, the wild way. You, you let the man the who shot out. the other man go. Hey, right, the shootout <laughs> didn't resolve it? Yeah. It seemed resolved to me. <laughs> oh, okay. You're, you're, so saying, you're okay. saying how do you deal with conflict within a community when there's not an authority? Yeah. And I mean, I, again, I guess I would pose the question, how do you deal with conflict within your family? Right, like how do you deal with, you know, if you got a beef with your brother, what do you do? Do you call the cops on your brother? No, nah, you no. work it out, <laughs> right. right? And you don't work it out just because, you know, you're so mature and you want the best thing for everybody. You work it out because you have to. Right. Because these, you're stuck with these people. These are your family. You depend on them. They depend on you. Mm -hmm. And you need 
peace and cooperation within that community nope. as much as they do. No yeah, disrespect, no disrespect, but that's where we have a big ethic divide. See, in a black family, there are authorities. You will get your teeth slapped out of your mouth mm -hmm. if you think, well, we're going to discuss it. Mom be like, you ain't discussing nothing. I mean, you know. <laughs> and I'm not saying yeah. there's a particular ethic way that you right. need to work it out, but my right. point is you work it out right. without calling the cops. Oh, yeah, okay. Right? Oh, right, well, right, we used right. to. So there is no, <laughs> there's not that kind of authority right. involved. You right. work it out without the government okay. coming in. Right. Right? Yeah. Yeah. right. And I think what that proves is that is evidence that we can work things out without Certainly. a government. Yeah. Because we do all right. the time. I, so, Lamar, yeah. what if you have two parties that are not working out? Do you bring them before a council where we can, like, I don't know, if we well, have a dispute? just like you were talking about, different communities have different approaches. Yeah. And I think we need to respect that because what works for one group of people oh, or what no. works on wait one side might what not he's work saying on the oh. Native Americans, they had a council, the Council of the Chiefs. Hebrews, we have a council, council the of the elders. The only thing dangerous about those councils is like, let me wait a minute, this is a council. So what's the hell right, 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 right. But, but well. some <laughs> councils may be dangerous, more dangerous than others, like ISIS. You know, they have spread it so much now, it's like. What do you know about gonna, ISIS? All you know is what these white folks has told you. What? That's well, it. Okay. And what we Nobody see on media. that we should organize like ISIS. ISIS is a militarized, fascistic organization. Yes. Right, 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 absolutely. The, that, that, that is obviously not what we want. I think the question is, I think maybe what you're talking about is the fear that if we didn't have an authority, we would not be able to resolve conflicts. And what I'm saying is okay. we can look at the way that we <coughs> operate in our daily lives and we can see that we're able to resolve conflicts without authority. But what you're saying. And that's proof that it's possible. But see, I'm not is, saying that it'll happen every time and it'll be perfect in every case, right. but it's proof we can do it. Well, the we issue try. itself becomes the authority. That's it. Yeah. Whatever the, the issue, whether it's food, wow. whether it's housing, mm -hmm. whether it's trying to get our children daycare, whatever, mm -hmm. that issue is the authority. We have the power then to collectively idealize and come up with a solution for that problem, which we call it a problem, but it is the authority that we have to address. But no, the authority more... lies with the, the authority oh. lies with the like you said, with the people, the authority right. and, and that anything it should be in any state, in my state, both for young again. Come on. Uh, you know, that the authority lies with, with the people and that there are certain things for the advancement and the betterment of your life, there are certain things that you're guaranteed. Right. Health care. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, housing, clothing, right. food, right. education, anything right. that's going to advance society. Right. One of the problems we have, like you were talking about with the rape of the earth and right. with the poor foods in right. a lot of our ghetto, in a lot of our neighborhoods, which are food deserts, exactly. is due to capitalist interest and greed. Exactly. That, you know, the Pop-Tarts and the Yummy Yums and all of yes. this stuff that is not full mm -hmm. of nutrition and mm -hmm. the reason that you can look on anything and sugar, that they don't even tell you how much sugar is yes. put into this trash and mm -hmm. um, that mm -hmm. we're ingesting mm -hmm. is because of these corporations. Yes. Once you do away with that and once power lies in the hands of the people, uh -huh. then the earth won't be raped anymore because it's, you don't have that element to where people are being, you know, people are padding their pockets. It's right. all about yeah. empowering the people. But there's one term, there's one, let me throw this oh, out. There's God. one term <laughs> that we have not used and I clearly identified, but it is part of what we've been doing all along. And that term is negotiation. Huh. How we work out problems is really what you've been saying. It is a process through which we empower our children through educating them the how hardest, to negotiate. The hardest negotiation, now I, I, I got a bone to pick with Yanga. You guys talking about doing away with corporations. The corporations feed a need. To the people. To the one percent. Wait, wait, wait. Go on, jump in here. Let my brother take that. Okay. 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 Sony PlayStation got that. <laughs> Try the gavel. You just lost the gavel. You just lost the gavel. We can talk about. We can talk about how you know Bill Gates has given money to feed the people and stuff like that. But what you're doing? Well, first of all, the corporations. And we're talking about capitalism. We're talking about people who are exploiting labor. Mm -hmm. And so essentially. Mm -hmm. Don, one question. Marvel is that a corporation? Yes. Okay. So it's Comcast. Right. Oh, right. 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 Checkmate. Go ahead. Anyway, <laughs> as I was saying, as I was saying, you know, yeah. these, you know, the thing is, is that corporations right now have more personal rights than a lot of human beings. Exactly. Right. I'm not with the right. I'm not yeah. with the right. Okay. Okay. And so just because they happen to be benevolent one day and give some food, their profits and stuff are are, are a result of stolen labor. Exactly. So I, I agree with son, though, but let her finish. Son, so, so basically, they, you know, these corporations, you know. You know, if they do something nice for us, I guess that's cool, whatever. But I don't think that, you know,
you know, we should be focused on the kindness of corporations. We should seize the means of production. Well, I don't Jeffrey think Son Dahmer. is saying that. I don't think Son is saying Let me get something right. He's saying the, the um, like, PlayStation, the, th the enjoyments of life. Is that what you're yes, saying? Yes, yeah, the product, yeah. The products, the, the, the products that corporation gives us. But, but, they, but they, the things that they well, produce are they not don't, the things they don't that give we us want. Those products. Right. They're, they're right. The they don't they give have, us those products. Right. Yeah, but once they give well, us see, those uh, products, we buy it, them. Become, it now becomes a demand. That's, the, see, damn, that's the damn problem. That is it. Because <laughs> it's programming. Like, see, Jeffrey Dahmer was probably a nice guy when he wasn't eating people. What? The issue is the corporations are part of the capitalist megalomania that is the deviant mindset of a people gone crazy over greed mm. through greed and mm. control. Mm -hmm. The corporations are the problem. They have Monsanto. The corporation, Jerry Capitalism Dollar, is cap the problem. Capitalism is the seed and the that. philosophy that the corporations use to promote and grow like a cancer yeah. all over in through the outer galaxy. Yeah. Yeah. There is yeah. no limit for yeah. cancer. Yeah. Until it destroys the host, it will continue to proliferate. So what corporations are are the malignant in incestuous mm. design of the creative force. Uh, yes, because <laughs> the uh, oh. Democrats, the Republicans, all of them are in bed together and they're all still bent on the same thing, keeping the money within the 1%'s pocket. Mm. Now, now, I agree with that completely. You want to um, run for my vice? But <laughs> 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 and look, the, the state that you were talking about, mm -hmm. right? I, I would I would go there in a heartbeat, right? Man, I'd, I'd, I'd have you too. Were, were I permitted, right? <laughs> um, but but I think there's still I think there's still a question about centralization of power going mm -hmm. on in a situation like that. So I, I wanted to bring up um, from a Black liberation perspective ways that anarchism has been a useful concept in in actual history, right? Okay. Um, so there's this guy Russell Maroon Schultz. Schultz. Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 familiar. Yeah. Um, and he writes a lot about um, the resistance to slavery um, in ways that, that most of us are not educated about. Mm -hmm. um, and in particular, he talks about in Haiti. Um, so Haiti, there was massive slave rebellion, right? Mm -hmm. um, and in the west of Haiti, you had a massive slave rebellion that basically formed into a centralized uh, black slave army, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, they held territory, mm -hmm. and they made raids against slave settlements, and they liberated people. Um, and they and they were pretty effective, right? Mm -hmm. they, they were posing a serious threat to to the white authorities in Haiti. The first ISIS continued. <laughs> no, I mean, no, we ain't gonna compare them. To oh that. Thank no! You. <laughs> On the east, thank you, thank right. you. <laughs> Continue. On the east side of Haiti, you had a similar kind of insurrectionary slave rebellion, but it was not centralized under under one command. It was small bands that encamped in the wilderness. They used the territory to their benefit. Um, they had various settlements all over the place, and they mostly retained autonomy, mm -hmm. which is to mm -hmm. say they did not all swear allegiance to you know, a particular leader. They did work together. They did right. cooperate mm -hmm. when they would perform raids, but then they right. would go back to minding their business right. mm -hmm. in, their, in their own settlements, in their mm -hmm. individual camps. Gangs, continue. You could call them bands <laughs> of outlaws. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure they were regarded as, right? Now, as, as the situation progressed in Haiti, um, the authorities, the white authorities, discovered that they were not just going to win by brute force here, mm -hmm. that they needed to start negotiating. Mm -hmm. And when they went to the community in the, in the west of the country, um, or the island, um, they found that they were able to identify particular leaders, yeah. mm -hmm. and right. that they were able to negotiate with them, mm -hmm. to deputize them, wow. or incorporate if they them. With that, they were able to kill them. <laughs> yes, right? exactly. And, and that even if particular leaders were gone, and it was more of kind of a council arrangement, mm -hmm. that there was a single body that they could approach and compromise. They could figure out what right. these people wanted what would be useful to them, what, what they're afraid of, mm -hmm. and give them that in order to gain compliance. Right. And they did. They were able to turn those forces largely into agents for tracking down other escapes. Yeah. Dominican in Republic. In return for independence themselves. Yeah. Right. The arrangement was, we will leave you alone, we won't raid your settlements as long as you return to us what is ours in other places. Right. They were eventually surrounded, encompassed, and destroyed, yep. whereas the communities in the east of Haiti held out for much longer. Yes. Now, it, it wasn't like they were invincible. Many of them were killed. Many Jacques of those Man. communities were, were destroyed. But some of them survived to this day mm -hmm. because 
they they bowed to no one. They, there, there was nobody to negotiate on their behalf or mm -hmm. to decide that it was time for them to surrender. So mm -hmm. the decentralization of power there Is was their greatest strength. Absolutely. It was the one thing that the white colonial power could not deal with. Mm -hmm. There I, was no one for them to talk yeah. to. Yeah, the real war there. Exactly. I have a, exactly. question. I have a yes. question, Marlon. Um, so when we're talking about, you know, we're, we're talking about what happens after anarchy comes and stuff like that. What, you know, what is, in your opinion, what is the transition from our current capitalist, white supremacist, et cetera, et cetera, system to a system of anarchy? Well, a lot of political platforms talk about revolution as a particular uh, instance or a particular endeavor. Oh, it's right? a process. We're going to mm -hmm. go, go to the White House and we're going to kick out the president and then we're going to be in charge of how everything goes. And I think that's a wrong way of looking Ooh, at how yeah. revolution when last works. Five minutes. <laughs> revolution is a process of transforming the lives of everybody yes. in this world, yes. right? And and that means transforming a lot of things. You know, you you just listed off a, a variety of different oppressions. And I think the reality is we need to we need to attack and destroy all of those oppressions if we seek to be truly liberated. And that's not to say that we can't do anything until they're all gone, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's a process. We become more free over time. Um, but we, we can't fool ourselves into thinking that we can deal with one or two of these problems and then the other things will work themselves right. out, that's right. right? If we are not attacking racism and sexism and capitalism mm -hmm. and, you know. Homophobia. Homophobia all the other isms. And, and, and intolerance um, and hostility of every kind, anything that, dis that concentrates power. Anything mm -hmm. that says these people have more power than other people is a threat to all of us. And I think yeah. once we can That's recognize right. that kind of logic, that giving mm -hmm. some people more power than the rest of us is a threat to everybody, mm -hmm. That's you right. know, then we can start moving in that direction. In well, big see, ways and small ways. So let me I jump in. I'm, I'm going to just jump real quick in the last five minutes because I want to address the Hades thing and I'm going to speak real brief. I think that not only was it centralized government, uh, that hindered them, but it was the it was neo colonialism. Mm -hmm. It was the effects of thinking like they're conquerors. Right. We look at we see the same thing in Algiers mm -hmm. when they finally kicked the French out of Algiers. That we know that most of the times when revolutions take place, it's two revolutions: one revolution to get rid of the oppressor, then the revolution to get rid of this neo colonialist That's sucker right. that then took the place of the revolution. So the one of the failures in the revolution of, of Haiti was Toussaint L'Overture actually thinking that these Europeans respected him as as one uh, as an equal, and when he went. To to meet him, they captured his ass and captured and a lot of his jail. general and put him in jail because you were still just a nigga. Right. And I, so I think when we look to, like you were saying, the east side of the mountain, that a lot of them retained a lot of African uh, heritage and going, making the maroon villages and things mm -hmm. of that nature, maintained and retained a lot of their African uh, uh, identity. Right. And it was those in the west that really started to think, not just in centralized government, but started to think like their oppressor and the colonizer with this neo-colonialist mentality, mm -hmm. kind of just was some of their undoing and their downfall. Absolutely. And again, and when you talk about centralized power, uh, of course, as a Hebrew in the church itself, that decentralization of the power is really what returns the power back to the people. In the small little congregation I go to, we have a council. Mm -hmm. We have a, everybody's able to speak, even our children. Y'all got the lion when too? You, uh, when he got, well, <laughs> the lion is the spirit of the most high. But that ability of the to give the children and everybody within that body the ability to have the right to speak mm -hmm. and to feel that they have ownership to be able to voice yes. their opinion and not have one person parroting and forcing down your throat his philosophy mm -hmm. as he understands it creates a power structure that is, is evident and everybody gets a part to play and gets to feel that they are a part, an integral part of that uh, created organization. We got to have a part two for our game. Yeah, we got to. Oh, man. We got to have, man. I enjoy, I enjoy having in, Marlon on so much, man. In the it's, last it's awesome. minute, and maybe if I could squeak in here a second. Um, so uh, there's a demand, you know, from, from, you know, African peoples in this country for reparations. And so, you know, thinking about the system of anarchy, you know, you've got people who, you know, for this labor that we've, you know, we've done, that our ancestors have done, you know, how how are then those those resources? Oh, we're done. 
Can we get our money, man? Yeah. Can we get that pay uh, 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 hey, You must break it down. See, you trying to, you trying to talk all price? Should be like, yo, can we get you know what I'm saying? Can we get that hey, money? Hey, right, it well, ain't well, it's cheap. Not part two, not part two. Yeah, yeah. 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 That was just a, that was a cliff. That's called a cliffhanger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. I'm talking about that. So next time we start off, make sure that God can open up. Yeah, yeah. Make sure she opens up with that question. Yeah. Cause that's what time we got to do a part two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm talking about that. Really? Yeah, do the yeah. yeah. Um, definitely. Now I know, Don, you want to do the thing next week, right? The Black August. So you want to come back maybe the 23rd? December. Yeah, that's the Sunday after, right? Yeah. Can we get you on the 23rd? 